So, I know recently the Hub Channel's been flooded with expensive high-end GTX 1080 and 1070 graphics cards, but believe me guys, I do love the affordable mid-range to low-end stuff as well. Over the years, I've spent my fair share of time playing with the budget GPUs, so I'm excited to be talking about the RX 460 and RX 470. These are, of course, the younger siblings of the hype machine that is the RX 480, and those hoping not to break the bank on their next graphics card purchase may well be looking to one of these two products. We'll start from the bottom, Drake style, with the RX 460. This one's particularly interesting because it's the first card being released that'll use a Polaris 11 chip, which AMD hope will be powering the portable gaming market soon too. The 460 is touted as their eSports gaming card, meaning it suits games that aren't very demanding but are still extremely popular like League of Legends, Dota, CSGO, Rocket League and the like. For a company seeking to reclaim market share, having the best value option for these games that are the most popular in the world seems like a great strategy. The Polaris 11 GPU used will employ 14 compute units for 896 stream processors, 48 TMUs and 16 ROPs, and the clock speeds will be set at a base frequency of 1090MHz but will be able to boost as high as 1200MHz. The result is 2.2 teraflops of compute performance when boosted. The RX 460 will be available in either 2GB or 4GB capacities using GDDR5 memory clocked at 1750MHz, which provides 7 gigabits per second throughput performance. That said, a slim 128-bit wide memory bus is being used, and the memory bandwidth is limited to just 112 gigabytes per second. Finally, this is expected to be a 75-watt max part, so it shouldn't even require a 6-pin PCIe power connector. In terms of performance, I'm expecting the RX 460 to be slightly faster than the Radeon R7 370. In fact, it should slot right in between the 370 and 370X. Those models released with an MSRP of 150 and 180 US respectively. Today, the most affordable R7 370 cards cost 120 bucks, so I expect the RX 460 to come in at around $100, hopefully a little south of that figure. Now, looking to the RX 470, the smallest Polaris 10 part. Here we find a GPU with 32 compute units enabled. This means in total there are 2,048 SPUs along with 128 TMUs and 32 ROPs. That's just an 11% reduction in cores when compared to the RX 480, so I don't expect the RX 470 to be a great deal slower. The AMD specifications see the RX 470 clock to just 5% slower as well when comparing the boost clocks. The base clock has been set at 928 MHz, but it can boost up to 1206 MHz depending on the workload. This means there's up to 4.9 teraflops of compute power on offer, or 3.8 teraflops when operating at the base frequency. It appears there'll only be a 4GB option for the RX 470, which in my opinion is great news. This GPU will be too slow to utilise an 8GB buffer, while it's too fast to be paired with just 2GB of memory. The GDDR5 memory is clocked at just 1650 MHz though, which will allow for a throughput of up to 6.6 gigabits per second. The same 256-bit memory bus of the RX 480 is of course being used here, so the bandwidth is a rather impressive 211 gigabytes per second. The RX 470 is a 120 watt part, which is a rather large 20% reduction from the RX 480. I assume we'll see a single 6-pin PCI power connector on this AMD reference card. Now in terms of performance, I don't expect the RX 470 to be more than 10% slower than the RX 480 as mentioned. The average could quite possibly be even less. This means we should again be seeing R9 390-like performance. The RX 470 will certainly be faster than the R9 380X. Given the 4GB RX 480 is a $200 part, it would make sense to see the RX 470 priced at around $170. Quite a few people are suggesting an MSRP of 150 bucks. At that price, I feel AMD would risk cannibalizing their own sales of the RX 480. Still, if this is true, it'll be amazing news for those on the hunt for a sub $200 GPU. What do you guys think of these upcoming AMD parts? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.